I'm Sarah L and welcome to Boating New Zealand On Demand, where we showcase this month's magazine and look at the latest in news, reviews and what's been happening on the boating scene. John Ackleson for Boating New Zealand magazine. Beautiful spring day in Auckland, not that we've had many of those, but lovely day today. We're out filming a whole range of Challenger boats from 5.5 metres to 7.2 metres. Join us. We're here with Ian Coots from Boat City with a whole range of Challenger boats. Ian, Challenger boats, it's sort of like a, a blast from the past. I can remember them from some years ago. They're back. Can you tell uh, us about that? Absolutely. We re, uh, relaunched the brand um, in probably uh, about a year ago. Right. Um, and uh, what we decided to do was to take a brand that was trusted and, and well liked and just bring it into the, the future a little bit. Changed a few minor um, deck and, and uh, hardtop uh, features just yes. to make them look a little bit nicer um, and, and slim streamed. But one thing we didn't want to change is our hull because uh, one of the things that we found was the customers were the ones that, that actually said to us, hey, we want, a, we want a product like Challenger or Challenger if you can get it because uh, it's always been renowned as a, a soft riding, Indeed. safe hull. Um, so that's what we went out looking for and that's how we ended up doing it. Right, and, and, and explain the, the connection now, your Boat City, which is sort of based in Wellington Way or Paraparam? Yeah, so Boat City is uh, based in Paraparam on the Cavity Coast. Um, been around for a long, long time, long over time. 50 years. And uh, it's, uh, it's the mother company of Auckland Marine Centre, okay. um, which is based up here in Auckland, in Tamaki, East Tamaki. Um, and so uh, we wanted a brand that we could supply the both of our dealerships, uh, one being Power Brand and one being in Auckland. And so you wanted a New Zealand built brand? A New Zealand built brand was right. our key and, and what we did to do that, we looked around for a long time and, uh, and asked customers was, was really how we got our, yeah. um, our lead to what we wanted. And every time we were talking to our customers, the, the word challenger would come up. And, right. uh, quite honestly, I never really rated them myself, I didn't yep. really know too much about them. But since I've been in the hulls and, and been uh, using the boats, very, very surprised with the soft ride, uh, the yes. performance of the boat, uh, really undersold obviously back in the day. Indeed. So uh, what we wanted to do is, is um, yeah, bring it back into uh, back into where it should be for a family boating. So, so the range goes from 550 through to 720? Yes, we have a 550 SE, yes. uh, 595 SE. So both of those boats are different. They're not just one boat stretched out, right. two different right. boats. Uh, and then we have the 650 EC, yes. and then we have the 650 hardtop. Both of those hulls are the same, but one is a hardtop, one is a softtop. And then we have our 720, which also is available in the EC, right. uh, and the 720 hardtop, which is the uh, sort of uh, pinnacle of our, of our range. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and we've had the opportunity to go for a ride in every one of them, yeah. and uh, I have to say it is quite impressive. Well, certainly the ride quality is impressive. Particularly noticeable in the smaller models, you think, goodness me, it's just only a 5.5 metre boat. Yeah. Um, really soft riding. Um, I'm sure uh, with the support of Auckland Marine Centre and, and yourselves, you're probably going to go places with these now. I think it, it's a welcome addition to the market. Yeah, well, that's what we want to do is we want to bring boating back to uh, the family. And right. uh, we wanted to supply a boat that was safe, um, solid, well constructed, uh, and uh, you know, all of the boats uh, will be CPC uh, rated. They yes. are actually now, but we're just in the process of getting those uh, underway. Yep. Um, so all CPC rated, uh, solid, soft riding, and affordable. And that's that's our uh, aim is to uh, bring it back to the to the boating family. Great. Right. Thank you very much, Ian. No problem. At all. Yep. Right. So what we have uh, here is the 595 SE, uh, which is um, probably our most popular selling boat at the moment. And a good little family boat, uh, great performer, available uh, with the solid um, canopy as you see with the rocket launcher or just a standard canopy. Then we roll on to the 720 which is the pinnacle of our range at the moment, it's a uh, master ship and uh, that's the one that we put the new hard top on, uh, the new mullions and open sliding screen. Um, 
Probably, to be fair, it's bigger than 720. Uh, it's a nice solid boat, um, and uh, it runs well with that uh, combination we have on the motor. So this is our 650 um, hardtop, uh, which is uh, uh, the first of the hard tops that we hard tops that we produced, and uh, this one is. Uh, powered by the 150 horsepower Mercury 4 stroke on the back, which is all you need in the way of power um, and performs exceptionally well. So coming into shot there is the uh, 550 um, SE, and that's the smallest of our, of, our, of our boats that we do, so the first one that was produced. Always been a very popular seller, and uh, the 595 sort of grew from that. 650 SE, uh, which is the soft top version of the hard top we talked about. Uh, this one has our new Bimini um, rocket launcher, which is uh, powder coated aluminium. And uh, in the uh, bow rails, you notice, are also powder coated aluminium. So something that's a little bit different. Uh, great sports fishing boat, um, water, to water toys. Uh, yeah, just a good all round family boat. So Ian, the 720 has seen quite a bit of development, hasn't it? It's, it's quite a new, a new model in many ways. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's, it's um, probably the, the, the answer to that is all the old moulds we have lying around of the old uh, hardtops <laughs> and moulds. Yes. So new deck, new hardtop, new mullions, um, complete new rear transom as well. Right. Uh, the transom design has completely changed. Uh, just so that we can t take things comfortably like the bait boards. Um, you know, which has become more and more popular these days. So that particular boat has the new Manta um, multi-purpose bait board on it, which I think you'll see uh, a lot in a lot of shops and a lot of boats because right. it retrofits to everything. Yes, uh, right. It just it fits on the uh, on the fits, pole, doesn't it? Yeah, either on the ski pole as a clamp option, but you can also get it as a like you have here as a um, solid mount as well. Right, right. Um, so you'll be seeing more of those from okay. Manta, I'm sure. That particular hull also has the wrapping uh, on the hull. Um, which is an option we provide. Uh, is that optional across the range? Or it's across the range. We, at this stage we do it mainly on the 650 or the 720, right. um, but it is optional right throughout the range. And it just changes the, the look of the boat. Yeah, and it's a smart colour too, that, Correct. that particular yeah. colour. Yeah, looks great. Yeah, we had a lot of input from uh, Marine Solutions on that, so they, okay. they've come to us with what they think was the best option. Okay. Now, and, and that particular boat, I, I, from memory, it's got U-deck on the floor. Yep. It, it's all, you know, it's all lined. It's it's all nicely finished. And, uh, yes. So U-deck is an option as well. Um, you either have carpet as standard, right. uh, or U-deck is the option. We sort of 50-50. Really don't have uh, an option either, a uh, preference either way. Um, the U-deck looks a lot nicer when yep. it's new, but can wear a little bit harder than the right. than the carpet. So option standard is carpet. Option to U-deck upgrade. Um, yeah, and then the, the other option on that particular boat there is the uh, rocket launcher handrail at the top of the hardtop. Uh, that's an option as well. Everything else is standard. Power range, Ian? Um, up to 250 horsepower. Right. Uh, and, you know, with a 200, they go nice. It certainly does. Um, yeah. So, yeah, anything up to 250. Uh, that also has electric toilet, um, right. which is an option. Um, but we put mostly in the ones we've done the electric toilets in them. Hmm. Great. Thank you, Ian. No Excellent.
was one of those typical whiter matter days, a shifty 15 knot southwest with a flat sea, and this midweek with barely another yacht in sight. What a day to check out the immaculate restoration of the town's 9.6 metre Makahu. <music> Owner Colin Boyd has owned and sailed yachts all his life. As a teenager, he owned an S-Class mullet boat, later on the X-Class Julie, and then since 1994, a succession of Townsend Keelers. The Townsend 25 Trill, the Townsend 34 Cara, and the 9.2 metre Nush. Sadly, Nush became matchwood after her Northcote mooring dragged in a big storm in 2007. Naturally, another Townsend was required. Moving quickly, Boyd discovered the 9.6 metre Makahu for sale. While it shares similar characteristics with its 9.2 metre smaller sister, the 9.6 metre 980 kilograms increased displacement provides a decidedly roomier interior. Built by Valdry Miller Boat Builders for the Mace Brothers in 1984, Makahu was in sound but scruffy condition. Following her purchase, Boyd spent months repairing her teak decks and a full repaint. Fast forward to 2021 when Boyd's insurance company requested a survey as a condition of continued insurance, a situation becoming increasingly common with our ageing fleet. The survey revealed rot on the starboard top sides and decks. The root cause was a collision by another boat that unknowingly broke the seal on the staunch and base, allowing rainwater to percolate into the end grain of the whole planking and the plywood beneath the teak decks. So Auckland's full of uh, boat builders, Colin, um, but of course there's not that many specialist wooden boat builder restorers. What made you choose Lee's? Well, I'd, um, after getting the, the first uh, survey and I knew I needed a, a boat builder of some standard, I rang up a number of other surveys, yes. not the one that did the survey, and they said if you want a, a job done that you won't have any regrets on, uh, Lee's Boat Builders, Greg Lee. With an estimate of the likely cost to repair the rot and a complete repaint, Makahu was hauled into the Lee's Boat Builders shed for her restoration. The damaged planking was cut back, scarved, new clowry glued in and glassed. The teak decks were removed and replaced with plywood of the same thickness, then glassed. The previously removed tow rails were rebuilt with new teak, with an additional wood at each staunch and base to keep them off the deck. The original estimate was exceeded early on, entirely normal for boat restorations, and Boyd decided the time was right for the full Monty of restorations. Yeah, those guys up there really know what they're doing, eh? Oh, it's like a furniture piece. Yes. I spend more time looking at it <laughs> than I do sailing it, and that's yeah. to be honest. Yes. Yeah, every time I walk up to it, I just look at how they've done the restoration job, and I can, yes. still can't believe it. Yes. And then um, all the uh, most of the deck fittings are new. You managed to salvage the winches. You got them re-chrome, but all the rest of the deck gear is harken. Almost. And and then as, on top of that, you put in a new engine as well. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll go through a couple of things. Put a new engine in. That was um, a Beta uh, Twenty Five Kubota base. Yes. Um, I liked how everything was easily accessible. So yes. no matter what happened out at sea, um, any replacement was right there in front of you. Yes. The mast and boom were stripped, painted and reinstalled with new 1x19 rigging. All running rigging was replaced with traditionally styled modern double plaited rope. With her exterior complete, the Lees team, Dale, Chris, Chris and Vinnie, tackled Makahoo's interior. The tired cabin sole was replaced with holly and teak plywood at a modest $1,500 per sheet. Fortunately, only two sheets were required. Then what was left of the port quarter berth was converted into extra galley stowage and the interior bright work was revarnished. Go to woe, the restoration took six months and Makahu was relaunched in June 2022. After his previous experience with a swing mooring, Boyd wisely opted to keep her on a Westhaven marina. In common with most Townsends, 
Mecca who has a skeg rudder, and while these can make for light, easy steering under sail, steering in reverse can be tricky, especially in a cross breeze. Wanting full control when single-handed, late in 2022, Boyd took Makahu back to Lees and had them install a bow thruster. You can never shout nicely. You can't berth the boat and you try and shout above the wind to, to dock the boat and that's the end of a nice weekend away. So preserve the relationship and put a bow thruster in. Yes, yeah, <laughs> no. That it's makes good. things so easy and yeah. I also done it years ago. Yeah. 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 She sails beautifully so. and the whole boat's a credit to you and, and to Lees Boat Builders. Yeah, g'day mate, Kitteridge here from Boating NZ. Well, we've got a fantastic day out here today and what better way to spend it than out on the water with the new Innovision 555. And uh, I've got Paul Senior here, the proud owner. Um, and Paul, we've, we've got a bit of a history with um, the Innovisions in the past. We've had a 515 yes. and that was probably the nicest five metre boat that I've ever been on. Sure, how does, thanks, how does this um, How does this stack up against that? Well, this is just a little bit bigger. It's just, you know, exploded out, you know, a, a bit, so it's a bit wider, a bit longer. Performance is a little bit better. Uh, it's got a bit more storage space as well. Um, when we're talking about Innovisions, I've done about 450 hours in them now. Wow. So I know about the performance of them. Sure. And what I like doing now is actually like showing off because they go so well. So any boat that comes alongside me, I want to give them a race, mate, <laughs> because I know the performance of this boat is just through the roof and we don't get wet and it doesn't pound. I've got zip weights on the back. So as far as performance goes, which is probably the number one thing you want when you're a fisherman and you need to get to these places, it's not always calm, you might have to go through some rough water to get there. Having a boat you can trust and you know you're not going to get wet and all your camera gear is going to get mm, wet. Sure and you're safe and comfortable, it makes a huge difference, especially to my confidence and how far I can take this boat. Um, the thing I like about it is the simplicity of it. I told Simon I want a simple boat. I don't like little gadgets everywhere that I may or may not use. I just want it real simple and clean so there's less to break down, there's less to maintain. Uh, that's my whole kind of concept of a fishing boat. And the other part I really like about it is the open centre console mm. where we can fight fish all the way around. Yep. And you can see the gunnels are at a height where you can fight fish. You know, other boats with a normal bow, especially when you get up to the bow here, I'll just move up here and show you. When you get up to the bow here on a regular boat, this gunnel's down really low and so you're casting, you've got nothing to lean against. But up on the bow, you know, it's a fant absolutely fantastic fighting position to be in. And you can have one guy on this side, you can have one guy on this side as well. But what I'm saying is the height here lets you fight fish and walk around the boat as you're fighting fish. And I remember when we were in the little one up at um, North Cape, we both had a good, good kingfish yeah. on, and it was no problem. We were both walking around, yep. up and over rods, and it, you know, it was much easier than if we had a cabin on the front. So that's the second part I really like. Because well, like you, with the plumb bow, like it's a bit mm. of a, a polarising thing, but it actually makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Because yeah. like it maximises the amount of space that you can have yeah. inside the boat. That's right. And uh, it just this, this feels like a much, much bigger boat, doesn't it? Because of the uh, because yeah. of that fact, and yeah. you can fit so much more in it. Yeah, yeah. The deck space is bigger, but it's this particular this gunnel mm. um, everywhere's a seat ar around everywhere's the a seat. around the um, whole whole boat. So it's a f fish fighting machine. Mm. And another thing that I don't like, mate, as you know is um, rods and rod holders. Mm. When you're fighting fish, like there's one here, if you're fighting fish, you have to lift it over. So Simon made all these um, rod holders down here so I can actually put my rods away. We've actually got them on the other side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so we've got, we, we can put them away like that. And, and that's how we keep our rods. Yeah, I must say, uh, from my point of view, like it is, it is a sport fishing boat. Like, mm. I mean, you know, we, we don't have any cover, but that's um, an intentional thing yes. because um, uh, being able to cast is like, you know, we, we both love lure fishing. Yeah. So whether it's uh, soft baits or whether it's stick baits or whatever, yeah. 
Uh, that's the type of fishing we like to do, and it just gets in the way. Yes. Uh, so having it open like this, yes, we do get a little bit of sun, but we, we protect ourselves, and we do get yeah. a bit. You yeah. know, we're obviously in the elements yeah. during the winter as well, but yep. we're, we're looked after really by yep. ourselves, and the fishing's more important, isn't yeah. it? Oh, yeah, its primary yeah. purpose is to catch fish and on lures. Mm. So it's lots of casting, lots of moving around, fighting big fish on small rods. You know, you've got to have the right platform to do it. So that's what this boat is for, is, is catching snapper on lures, if you want to niche it right down. Sure. Yeah, and the other things I like is the storage space. So he's a, he's a clever bugger, Simon. Mm -hmm. he, um, and he works with you. Tell, you tell him what you want and he'll do it. Um, but see, you've got a little tackle storage in here. So this is where I keep my tackle boxes. And I keep all my tools under here. So trace and tools bits and pieces under there, so that's really good. And you can stick all your bags and your anything you want. If you're a diver, you could stick heaps in there, but there's heaps. Probably doesn't look too good on camera there at the moment, but you can see down here, that's all our waders. There's a lot of room for storing stuff. But you, as far as quality of boats go, I always like to look at the wiring. Is it organized? Is it well labeled? Does it look okay? And if you look in the back here, you can see how the wiring's done. It's all tidy, labelled, well organised. So you can see he builds them with a bit of love, mate, Simon. Yep. Now while you're up there, yeah. um, we've, you've fitted it out with the Haswing. How's yes. that changed things for you? That's a quite a good question, Mark, because I don't know if you were around and people going, you got to get, you got to get a trolley mm, motor. I mm, said, no, I don't want mm, one. Looks ugly. Mm. You know, it's another thing to break, I want to keep it simple. Mm. But now, now I've used it for a while, it's probably, it's changed, it's changed mm -hmm. my life, mate. Mm -hmm. It is just so good for what I do. I can anchor on a school of bait, just push the button, and, you know, what it, spot lock on a school of bait, and work ups, up and down with your lures, and you just catch fish all day. If I'm going for lunch in a bay, I can go in further than all the normal boats with the with the uh, anchor and a road out, and I can go right in close to the beach or the rocks and have mm, lunch. Mm. You know, a stone throw away from land, which is really cool as well. Um, so now I'll never have a boat without mm. one. And the Haswing, it's been it hasn't missed a beat. It's mm, been great. Mm, mm. And uh, I noticed you've got some really nice electronics here too. Like, um, how have you found the Ray Marine? Um, it's a real, real good size, isn't it? Yeah, I found it. It's, I like the touch screen. Works well, but I've also got a uh, remote here as well because sometimes if you're pounding along and you can't get your finger in the right place, you can just use this instead. So I've got the best yeah. of both worlds with the it's kind of like a, a mouse and a, a touch screen as well. You can undo that, and there's your ladder, and it's on both sides as well. Mm, that's a good idea. So grateful when the kids, you know, uh, at the beach, you can use your haswing, pull right up to the beach, kids can jump off the back of the ladders, and you've got the perfect like picnic mm. platform as well. So yep. I really enjoy having no cabin, um, you know, especially with three kids on board, there's just so much more room and they can jump off the sides and, you know, have a lot of fun as well, yep. being that open kind of boat. Over the next couple of hours we went on to catch a bunch of modest snapper to 2.5 kg, along with a nice trevally. But anyone who knows Paul Senior will not be surprised to learn that catching one or two snapper every few minutes is simply too little action for his liking. Let's head out for a bit and look for workups, he declared. And those of you who know me will not be surprised, I rolled my eyes and ruefully shook my head. However, I should have had more faith. Not that Paul would be right, but that he would be lucky. Although a workup momentarily glimpsed through binoculars two miles out to sea turned out to be three gannets sitting on the water, we decided to fish over some OK signs showing on the big grey marine fish finder. Not only did we start catching snapper, but we were quickly joined by two whales followed by a bunch of dolphins, and then gannets materialised from nowhere to plummet into the water just 200 metres away.
Well, that's all from us this month. We hope you've enjoyed the show. If you want to read more, pick up the magazine at your local newsagent or head to www.boatingnewzealand.co.nz to read and subscribe. See you again.